This is a frog graph that takes annotations from hypothesis and brings the student's ideas into frog and lets them work with it um, in different ways. So hypothesis is an open source tool that lets um, people annotate web pages or PDFs um, together in private groups or publicly. And uh, in our case, uh, the learning analytics students had been annotating learning analytics articles during the week. Since I cannot share um, that private data with you, I will use um, some documents from the critical curriculum project as examples. So here we have an example of a curriculum document, a web page, and we can see here that it has been note, um, annotated. So I can open these, an these public annotations. Um, you'll see here that sometimes they are threaded, sometimes um, there are, uh, there's rich media, there are links, and uh, what we're going to do is to really take these annotations out of the spatial uh, connection with the um, different articles, bring them all together and let learners um, mix them up, move them around, uh, try to make connections between uh, different readings. Um, we see here that um, they have uh, usernames in Hypothesis, and what we'll do is we'll assume that these are the same, the students who made these annotations are the same students who will be logging in, and so we'll be using the same usernames in, in Frog to make it easier to actually connect what the students did in an external tool with something that they're doing in Frog. So if we look at this graph, um, we start out with the hypothesis operator, and uh, what it does is, of course, to get ideas from hypothesis through the open API. We could search by hashtag, we could look into a private group if we provided an authorization token, uh, specify the date, and so on. In this case, we'll look for all the public annotations uh, attached to this specific document that we just looked at. And if we want to make sure that this is working before we start the graph with the students, we can preview this operator. And here we see exactly the same annotations that we were just looking at um, with rich um, with rich media, um, with uh, threading, and so on. And what we're going to do now is to map these to the student accounts, and then we're going to send them into Frog Activities. So um, because we need the student accounts to be really matching, we are going to, and we also want the students to be in predefined groups because in our case, the students will be in the same groups every week throughout the term and also um, in different tools that they're using. So in this case, we'll just hard code the groups that they're in uh, instead of using a random operator, for example. What we'll then do is we'll say, take these, uh, these hypothesis annotations and map them to usernames in Frog. And then we can do anything we would uh, do with traditional student content that, that's been uh, generated in Frog. And one of the things that we can do is we can say, here's a group. I want all of the group members' contributions sent to that group. Um, so that's what we're doing here. And then we want to provide them with a text area uh, where they can answer some questions. Um, in this case, the prompts are specific to Bodong's class and not to the critical curriculum project. Um, then we'll take whatever they write, we'll send it over here to gallery that's available to the whole class. So we want to share what each group writes with the whole class. And then we'll give another prompt to each group. Um, and then again, we'll take what they write in the second stage and we'll share it with the whole class. Um, so here you see that you have two activities open on the screen of the students at the same time. One of them on a P3 whole class level and one of them on a group level. So now we're going to um, try to run this graph and we'll see how it looks. So when I start, it's going to take a tiny bit of time because it's actually going out and, and fetching the latest annotations and it's processing through this little pipeline. And we see now that these two activities are ready. So we're going to pull up our two students and I'll have to log in. So I'm going to log in as Westerdale here and as uh, Remy Kalir here. Now, there are different ways of logging into Frog. Often we go through Moodle or Canvas uh, through an LTI connection. In this case, um, we didn't want to use uh, an LMS and we wanted to make sure that the students, again, spelled their names exactly as, um, as they used in Hypothesis to make this matching. So we pre, um, 
supply a list of student names and then let students log in in this manner. So you see here that we have um, Remy Collier logged into group three because that's what we predefined. We have Westerdale logged into group one and you can see that they are looking at different um, annotations. Uh, so these are the annotations uh, from for example, Westerdale and all the other students in his um, group. So I'm going to make this window bigger. You can see here that we can um, we can drag this to provide a little bit more space for these annotations here. Um, we can collapse the co comments and so on. And now we can start uh, taking some ideas about some some notes about what these annotations are telling us. Uh, now, in this case, all of the annotations are from the same document because that's how we specified our search query. In uh, Bodong's case, there were three or four different articles that were all brought together. So again, a bit of the idea is to start by reading an article and having notes that are very tightly connected to the specific um, location in that document, but then to take those annotations out of the context of the specific article and let students bring those ideas together across um, different readings that they've had. So I can uh, start writing... Uh, some things here. Uh, one thing I, I, I'd like to show as well is that we have a dashboard here um, that will let us uh, see in real time as the students are typing. Uh, as you can see here, this is the first document. And uh, if I type in something here, uh, you'll see that this um, appears down there. So the teacher can be um, kind of keeping track of, of what students are doing and how their progress is doing. Um, these are actually, uh, since there are reactive documents, you, you also have the whole edit history that you can go back and look at um, if you're interested in that kind of thing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take these two short texts and we're going to send them to gallery so that everyone can see all of the group's productions and we'll give them another prompt. So here we see on the left side um, the two texts, one from each group, and then another prompt. I'm going to just quickly move through. And finally, we just see a list of all the texts that the students produced. Um, this one is blank because the first group didn't write anything. So there you have it. Um, not a very complex graph. Um, there's a bit of action going on in the, in the beginning here because we're fetching these external items and then mapping them to the frog users. But then it's really three um, sections of activities that are fairly similar. Um, but you know the richness is comes really through um, the content that the students are bringing in with them after spending a week reading and reflecting on these articles and um, in the class where that we ran the students spent more than one hour on this on this um, graph really working intensely with um, the text and with their discussions in the in the groups and in the whole class so it was a, an interesting uh, example of connecting something that happens during the week uh, individually and um, kind of this intense collaboration um, in the synchronous session